Hello and welcome to this quick tip. In this one we're going to talk about this printer here. Now this is the Fabricator 2 from Hobby King and we've been using it now for about three or four weeks. We did a video a while ago talking about the printer and taking our first look, we talked about how to do the calibration, a couple of tips and tricks on how to set it up to get it printing well. And back then we were using predominantly PLA plastic. Now PLA as we talked about is a nice shiny hard plastic that doesn't need the high temperatures that some other plastics do but unfortunately can result in a slightly brittle print so the way those prints tend to fail in the event of too much stress is they just snap. Now in the hobby where we're using the 3D printer to print maybe mounts, parts, adapters, camera bits, all those pieces that we use in the hobby would will occasionally end up getting involved in a hard landing and because of that they are potentially going to break. Printing them in ABS is a much better option. ABS is a much more resilient plastic. ABS is actually what a lot of the props that we're using are made of. And because of that, the way it can, tends to fail is it tends to start to get those kind of white stress lines. And if the 3D print is done well, it becomes quite a resilient little part. Now this printer can print ABS but there are a couple of tips and tricks I found over the last couple of weeks doing printing with this printer pretty much every day now. And because I've had a couple of requests from subscribers, I thought I'd put this video together to explain what I do. So let me run through the tick list of things that I've done here to get this little guy printing in ABS. First thing you need to do is make sure that the heated print bed it is, is at the maximum temperature. That's 60 degrees C on this printer. I have been in touch with Hobby King to see whether or not you can push that a little bit. And the advice was no, that's the maximum rated temperature. So that's what I've been using here. 60 degrees C is a little bit cool for printing ABS. You want it a little bit hotter. And on most of the other printers that I've got here, I'm using kind of 70, 80 degrees minimum for ABS to make sure that it sticks to the bed. Now one of the reasons that you need the bed so hot is because the way ABS works, as ABS cools it contracts very slightly. So that means the top part of the print, if the top part of the print is getting cold, then as that contracts what it does is pull the corners off the bottom of the print bed. And you'll see that a lot when you're first printing with ABS if you don't follow some of the tips. So 60 degrees isn't warm enough, but if that's all we've got to play with, make sure you're using it. You're obviously going to have to turn up the hot end in Cura to be nice and warm. Typically 230, 235 is about where you're going to need it to be for most ABSs. But check the specs of the individual ABS plastic that you're using. The warmer the filament, the better it's going to stick. And also the more liquid the filament as it gets hotter, the more adhesion you're going to get to the layer that it's currently printing on top of. So the part itself will not split as easily. Also having that extra heat around the print bed just helps keep that ABS dimensionally stable so you don't get any splits or delamination as you're printing. Cover the printed heat bed, the, the 60 degrees C, with something to help it print. Now you need to put this stuff on when it's nice and cold. We normally use Captain Tape and ABS slurry, and all that is is just a little bottle of acetone with all of the offcuts that ABS that we've been printing with dissolved into it. And on the top of the Captain Tape, we smear some of that ABS slurry. As the acetone evaporates, it leaves a very, very thin layer of ABS that the ABS print can then adhere to, and it helps a lot with adhesion. On this printer, because it comes already installed with this tape, I didn't want to use slurry. Uh, one of the reasons that you use it on top of something like Captain tape is I like the fact that you can just rip the tape off when it gets too messy and you can throw it in the bin and you've got a nice clean print bed to start with again put the captain tape back down put a layer of slurry on top and you're away this printer I found the best thing to use is actually hairspray now a lot of the high hold hairsprays actually have plastic in so when you spray the hairspray onto the printed heat bed it's kind of like using an ABS slurry as the hairspray evaporates it leaves a very thin layer of plastic and that gives a much better surface for the ABS to hold on to. The other tip is make sure you're printing with a brim. In Cura you can select to have this kind of big brim around the bottom of the print that's called a brim make sure you've got that turned on because then if the print does start to lift it'll actually be the corners of the brim that's lifting not the print itself. 
I was having problems with lifting in the corners because of that slightly lower printed heat bed temperature. By using a raft, I have got away with it every time and I've printed lots and lots of things, including this stuff on the screen right now, and it's been great. If you are finding that even with these kind of settings, you're getting separation or delamination in the print, i.e. you can actually see gaps in between the layers as the ABS is cooling, one of the other things you can try is covering up the big holes at the front and sides of the printer with something like a little sheet of Perspex, maybe stick a little bit of Velcro at the top to hold it in place. And that's to keep it away from drafts. You do need to make sure that this isn't in an area where there's a breeze. If there's any kind of cold air blowing over it, then it will affect the ABS print and potentially it will cause you problems. By printing the sides, it means that you can keep the heat inside the machine and keep the drafts out and that will help you. Finally, the last thing I'd say is do consider increasing the infill for small parts. Now the infill is the honeycomb section that goes in between the outside perimeter that fills the part in. I found that printing at these slightly lower bed temperatures, if you use a very low infill like 20 or 30% on small parts, there isn't enough for the ABS to grab onto. And if you do have a print that wants to pull apart, it will manage it. So in those really small pieces that you're printing where you're having these problems, consider increasing the temperature on the hot end very slightly and also increase the amount of infill so there's more plastic for each layer to hold onto. So using those tips, I've got some beautiful prints out of this little printer with ABS that I'm using in the hobby. The two that I'm actually using here, one of them is the SD card removal tool for Fat Shark goggles allows you to get the SD card in and out even with the demisting enclosure in place and it just slips in the side of the band so you don't lose it. And the second one that we've been printing while I've been talking is one of the little FPV antenna knurled nuts and these are there to help tighten up the antennas onto your goggles or FPV video transmitter. Both of those are available on our Thingiverse pages along with lots of other stuff that we've designed as well. So hopefully that helps those of you with a Fabricator 2 who are planning to have a crack at ABS. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. We try and release at least two videos a week, usually a quick tip on a Tuesday and a more in-depth video on a Friday. And sometimes we manage to get a few more out as well. If you're interested in radio control, then the playlists are useful to have a look at. Anything that's called Introduction To is an organized set of videos that teach you from first principles about the subject that you're interested in. But we also have information about the majority of popular open source flight controllers, how to build quadcopters, fixed wing models, reviews, setups, unboxing, all kinds of things in here as well. So if you haven't already had a look at the playlist, then I'd recommend going have a look through here to see if there's anything that takes your fancy. Finally, we do also provide updates through things like Twitter, Instagram, and also post all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse as well. So if you like what we're doing here on YouTube, have a look at those things and subscribe to us there and you'll find out what we're up to in advance of the videos coming out here on the channel.